In a world of luxury SUVs, is the 2021 GMC Yukon Denali the best luxury deal out there? We'll find that out. Welcome back to the channel, I'm Lauren Fix. Today we're gonna to drive the 2021 GMC Yukon, but this is the Denali, which comes with a very large engine and some special interior features that are exclusive to Denali. And we'll show you all that as we go through performance, handling, safety, we'll look at value, technology, features, all the 10 categories that we cover in our Car Coach Reports ratings. And in the end, we'll give you a Car Coach Reports total because we're gonna give you information that the dealer's not gonna take the time to spend with you. They're there to sell you a vehicle. We're here to inform you and educate you so that you get car smarts. If this is your first time to the channel, we give you a lot more than just car reviews, first looks. We give you information because knowledge is power. Make sure to subscribe and hit that little bell so you don't miss anything. We've been waiting for some changes in the Yukon. There's also a Yukon XL, which we'll do in a separate review. That is a much bigger vehicle. And we'll give you a few reference points along the way so that you can help make a decision for yourself. Also note that there are three different engines and we'll talk about that as well. Let's go for a ride. There are three engine choices on the Yukon. However, the Denali has one engine option. It's a 6.2 liter gas powered engine with 420 horsepower, 460 pound feet of torque, backed by a 10 speed, automatic transmission with that new push technology. I'm not a fan, but we'll talk about that when we drive the vehicle. Zero to 60 times 7.1 seconds. This large SUV weighs 5,827 pounds and has a towing capacity of 8,200 pounds, which means it'll haul a lot. So how does that impact the fuel economy on this Yukon Denali? It's about 15 miles to the Gallon City and 20 on the highway. The other Yukons are the SLE, the SLT, and the AT4. They're powered by a 5.3 liter gas engine or the inline three liter turbo diesel, which I really like, but is not available in the Denali. Let's check out the performance, zero to 60, 7.1 seconds, 6.2 liter. Wow, this is a lot of mass to move. And that's 60, 7.1 seconds. It's good, it's really good. It just sucks down the fuel though. And I mean, even though they've done so much to manage the fuel, it's just difficult because it's such a large vehicle. Now, if this was diesel, you'd have even more torque and the horsepower isn't as important as the torque because you buy horsepower, but you drive torque. And when you're hauling a trailer, that's where torque is really critical and you're hauling anything. So for performance, I gave it an eight. There's a lot of elevated capabilities when you're talking about the new Denali. They've done a lot of details as far as stiffening up the chassis, making it have magnetic ride. What magnetic ride means is that it will adjust according to what you're doing. So it knows if you're going off road or if you've raised or lowered the vehicle. And again, this vehicle will go up or down. It will adjust itself based on what you're doing, what mode you're in. And that's not typical of a vehicle like this. Typically, you would just find it's a truck. It, you might have like a tow haul, haul mode, but in this case, they've done a really good job. The active response four-wheel drive system is really about advanced chassis controls. And it also has independent suspension, which you typically do not see in a large vehicle. What this means is it has an automatic two-speed transfer case. And the transfer select mode allows the chassis controls to communicate with the computer. So it has an electronic limited slip differential, and that's coupled with the new multi-link independent suspension. The Yukon also offers really nice ride sophistication. It's a comfortable ride, even though this is a big vehicle with huge brakes, which are part of the handling. And of course, the available four corner air ride adaptive suspension offers ride height adjustment up to four inches total and an automatic self leveling feature, which is really great if you're hauling something heavy on a trailer. When you're going off road, you can adjust the ride height up to two inches so that the body doesn't get damaged. In higher speed highway driving, the vehicle will adjust itself down about three quarters of an inch to improve the aerodynamics which improves fuel economy. The suspension has a nice little feature as well. It is a driver selectable setting that engages the vehicle to go down two inches. That will aid passengers in entering and exit when the vehicle is parked. The self-leveling mode also helps keep the ride really nice on the highways. There's a lot of technology involved when it comes to the handling and the brakes and the controls in this vehicle. And General Motors has done a great job with the GMC Yukon Denali and it earned a nine. 
When you're talking about visibility, I stopped the car because I really want to show you some of the things that you may not see while I'm driving. There is a very large windshield and yes, you can adjust the seat. There are some limitations because this dash is so ominous, but the vehicle is as well. So you have to realize when you're driving a ship, essentially, you have to think about the visibility. So the sills are low. This is where you put your arm essentially, or you can see out. That's great. The mirrors and the nine cameras, fabulous. Of course, I really, really, truly love the backup mirror. When you flip the switch in the center, it immediately turns to a camera, which is really good. The fact is you have to get used to this at first because at first it almost gives you a headache, but now I really like it and you get used to it very quickly because you can see what's going on around you. With a vehicle with this big of a back end, you really want to see where the vehicle is located and you don't want to drive over anything or potentially damage your vehicle. Because visibility is kind of a safety feature, but all the things they've done to try to make it easier for you, for visibility because of the limitation out the back, especially with the third row up, and I know there are other ways to look around the vehicle, I gave it a seven. We've all heard of forward collision warning, or at least I hope you have. That means if you're going to hit a vehicle in front of you, the vehicle will intercede and stop. And if you've ever experienced that, it's, it's pretty intense. This is more enhanced because when you're driving a vehicle of this weight and this size, it's something that's really important, especially if you've got a lot of people on board. Honestly, I think something like forward collision warning should be standard on a vehicle of this size and they're offering it as an option. So it's something you have to think about when you start adding in all these features. Of course, the Denali has it, but not everyone can afford that. Standard is forward collision alert, notifying you that if you are getting close to someone or is potentially an accident, it's going to let you know. And that's really, really important. Now, you may have heard of adaptive cruise control. That means you put on your cruise control and it'll adjust so that you don't get too close to the vehicle in front of you. And when you come to a stop, this vehicle will and it'll start back up. You can adjust the standard following distance. And again, I would recommend more distance than less of a vehicle this weight. Because remember, to stop a vehicle like this at 60 miles an hour is more than a football field. And with that in mind, all these safety features should be standard. I gave it a safety rating of eight. And please be safe when you drive. I have my eyes on the road. I try to glance at the camera so you can see me. And most of the time I try to do the safety features when I'm stopped. But I want you to be aware a vehicle can only save you so much. Paying attention is so much better than using all these nannies to do it for you. Seating is an extremely important feature. Why is it important? Because this is the only place you sit in the car or one of those other seats, and there are three rows in this vehicle, and they have to be comfortable because you're hauling people most likely. So starting with the driver's seat and the passenger seat, they are the same, which I appreciate because not every vehicle is doing that. You've got 10-way seats on both sides, four-way lumbar. This is excellent. This is the Denali level, and I have to say they've done a great job heated, and ventilated plus the heated steering wheel that's great especially in the colder climates let's take a look at the second row when you head back to the second row there's access to the third row that i want to show you as well entering the second row is easy but going to the third row you pull that right down one pull everything goes down kids can get around things can get placed on here really well designed and quick moving, which is important. In the second row, there are a lot of benefits. You not just have 5.5 inches of sliding back and forth on these seats, which is appreciated. There's a lever on the right. There's another level that folds these seats flat so you can access the third row. 12.6 inch entertainment screens. Of course, that's covered in features because it's a nice one. You've got all your controls in the door, both lock, unlock, as well as window lifts. You've got your Bose audio system as well as storage in the door. Heated seats in the second row as well as climate control. And that's nice because there's also USB connection as well as USB-C. Let's go back to the third row. You should note that if the second row is all the way back, the third row seats won't come up if they're flat. And I just learned that. All the way back here in the third row, as an adult who's 5'8", there is tons of knee and headroom. Keep in mind, as you go further back, you're going to have more limited space because of the wheelhouses that are here. But there is two cup holders. There's the ability to move this seat down, which I appreciate, so I can get out. And the button is there for getting in as well. And you've got USB-C charging ports on both sides so that people aren't fighting for charging cables. Overall for seating, for all three rows, which I'm really impressed, earned an eight. 
All right, let's take a look at technology. As you can see, there are some pretty basic gauges here, which is good, especially when you're towing something. But the fact that you've got information in front of you that is digital and adjustable is a big part of what's available. Starting with the main screen, you get your temperature, and of course, that's your sign recognition that currently has two dashes in it. And since we're parked, because we don't want to be doing this while we're driving, going to the next step will show your miles per hour. There's also information as you go up and down. There are some blank pages that you can fill in. Your transmission fluid, which is very important if you're towing something. Then you go on to your driver assistance, your follow distance, which is adjustable, your brake pad life, which is really important. Obviously, it's a safety feature. Air filter, which I really like that. No one else has that. Tire pressure, really good to know. Your oil life, your fuel range, and of course your distance, last distance trips, average fuel economy. There's a lot of idling here, so don't use that as your number for MPGs. We get a lot better than that. And then of course we go back to the speed. Going to the next screen, you have of course your audio systems, which are adjustable. Then you've got your navigation, which you can adjust any way you need and hooking up your phone. And of course your information as far as pages and your display and what you want. This will also allow you to adjust your head up display, which is part of technology. You can limit your speed limit. It is a huge 15 inch, one of the biggest on the market head up display, really, really nice and really well done. Going to your center screen, there is some cool technology. This is a standard screen that you would see in a lot of different General Motors products. This has, of course, audio, your phone, your navigation, your Wi-Fi hotspot, which is standard. You got your Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Going this way, you can just do the main home screen, set it up any way you would like. Going to the other direction, you've got your trailering. Now, this is really part of technology that is interesting. There are nine cameras and allows you to go through a full checklist, but it also gives you great information that you would need, including your connections and your maintenance and your vehicle itself. You put that information in. Going through your checklist, you can tell them what you're towing. And this is really, really helpful to have this conventional towing information because you'll get all the things that you should be doing. And if you're not doing them, you're going to potentially have an accident or a safety issue. Further down your trailers, you can put in your different trailers, whether you're hauling a friend's trailer or something that you might have, you can put the information in so that you obviously have some really smart, safe ways to get to where you need to be. Additionally, there is the camera button. Now there are nine different camera settings. So you can see behind you, and of course you can see you've got the lines here as well, which I think is great. And that's in front of you. Going to the next screen, you can look directly downward. That is really helpful. There are cameras all over the vehicle. And then again, you can go back to the rear view of the same thing. You can check your side views. This makes the car disappear, but what it does do is gives you an information of how close or how far you are to something. This allows you to have someone back there to help you, which I think is great for hitching. That is the hitch right there it is a class three receiver that you're looking at. It does look funky, but that's what it is. And then going over to the, the next button, we go from here over to here, you can get the split view of what's directly behind you in addition to what the vehicle looks like around you. Really nice, crisp, clear pictures. And then if you go over to the far one, this is gonna give you that same type of picture. So there's nine different choices. And if you can't find something there, you're doing something wrong. And you certainly wanna get some assistance if you've never done that. You get your My GMC. there's an app that you put on your phone, great information, Sirius XM. There's Amazon Alexa, of course, and all of your other things. This vehicle, as well as all GM vehicles, have my favorite system of OnStar. It is probably one of the best systems on the market if you need any assistance to whatever it is that you might be doing. One of the technology things I'm not a fan of is this is your shifter. So it's pushed to park, pull to reverse, push for neutral, pull for drive, drives me crazy. Drives me nuts, I don't, I don't care for this. I don't know, you let me know what you think. Put it down below if you love this system, you think it's the smartest thing you've ever seen, great. I think I'm just good with either a shift on the column or a standard shifter, it's just more intuitive, this is not. One last thing before on technology before we give it a rating, we'll go through all this in features, which is next, is there is tons of places to charge. USB-C, regular USB, and of course wireless charging and your standard outlet. They really thought of everything and of course, Wi-Fi is standard. Pretty impressive on technology. We gave it an eight. One of the best features in this vehicle is the running boards. I love that they retract. It's really important when you're working with a vehicle like this. It's difficult to get up for some people, especially if you have some sort of disability, but they've really thought about things because people that are using this are using this with children as well as adults. The Yukon Denali does have special interiors that you cannot get in the other trim levels. It includes the interior colors like our test vehicle, which has real wood, real leather. There is no joke, this is real wood. 
believe it or not, I know you wouldn't think about that, but this is real wood, really nice soft leather, real stitching too. I mean, that is not something you would get typically on a vehicle like this. I also like the fact that the buttons are very intuitive, easy to use. You have your head up display, your information, and you can adjust the brightness. In addition to that, you've got your park assist, your lane departure warning, you can adjust it, hill descent, and of course my favorite thing to shut off, the auto off system that I say only saves you about a tablespoon of fuel per tank. You can see that there's a brake controller switch that is added to this vehicle, and I think this is great. This is a standard feature on all the Yukons. If you're hauling something, you must have trailer brakes. I do not rely on surge brake applications. If you're a person that tows anything, you're well aware that's a better choice. We talked about this in suspensions. You can adjust for the four up, four down, or two. It depends where you're going. If you're off-road or on-road, you can adjust your headlights as well. Lots of good features, lots of buttons and things that you can use. We just covered this beautiful screen that is nice and big. I, I think this is great. This is what consumers want. It's very intuitive. In addition, you've got your standard controls here if you prefer to use this for volume for your home. And of course, you can adjust everything here. Further down is your standard climate control. Further down is your standard climate control, which is really easy to use. Nice knurled knobs. You've got heated seats, air-cooled seats, and you can pick the heated if you want the backs or the bottoms or both. And then of course your climate control and your rear climate in case the kids want to fight back there, you can stop that. In addition, like I said, you've got the wireless charging and of course tons of outlets and you've got two cup holders. You're probably wondering why I'm pointing the camera up here. It's because there is one button that most people miss. Yes, this is simply for putting down the seats in back, but this is for moving your center console. This is new. The console moves back and forth. And what's neat about that is this center console has the ability to not just move back and forth, but there's a lot of hidden spaces, especially if you're going somewhere and you drop the set of valet. Now, right here, you've got a little tray. I'm not even going to give you any ideas what I could put there, but you could put your wallet. We'll come with something simple. You can put down below in the comments what you would store in this little tray, but I'll tell you, it's very smart. Plus, you've got the console, which opens, and those cup holders go further back. I think they've done a really smart job. General Motors is really trying to come up with some creative ideas, and this is definitely one of them. For features, it gets a 9. <laughs> When you're looking at design, there's some very distinct features that belong exclusively to GMC, like the Galvano grille. This is huge, and it makes a statement. And when you have a huge GMC logo, this may be larger than the Mercedes logo that I talked about in the past. It's one of the largest logos I've seen. Does it impact the design style a little bit? That's a personal taste. But as far as the grille itself, it looks really good. I love the C headlights. The C-shaped headlights runs its own distinct daytime running lights and it's LED and you can see there are three light stages here it makes it really bright and stand out in the crowd because you need that when you're towing something or you're going off-roading. Further down you've got LED driving lights and of course you've got some extra ventilation because this is all grill and it really is being used to cool the engine. Some of the distinct features are these beautiful alloy wheels. They're 22 inch riding on Bridgestone tires. These are all season tires. If you're gonna be doing some heavy off-roading in the snow, I'd suggest a set of winter tires because traction is gonna be key. But overall for a daily driver, this is impressive. GMC logo on the side, Denali again, bigger than life. Very typical of them. They've got the camera built into the side view mirror as well as all the blind spot detection. Just more ways to keep you safe in a vehicle of this size. Along the side, one of the things that I think is a really nice design feature, not on every vehicle, but it's becoming more popular, is when you open the door, you can see these running boards move. And that makes it a lot easier to get in, especially if you've got packages or children. Across the back of this very large vehicle is a huge piece of glass, which improves the visibility because when you're driving something of this size, you have to use the nine cameras that are included, but it's also important to have a big piece of glass so you can see what's going on. And of course that rear view camera is important. One of the things I really like is that the rear wiper blade is tucked up underneath the rear deflector. The reason I like it there is it protects the wiper blade. So when you need it, it's not covered with snow or ice or damage from just wear and tear from hanging out right here. I think more manufacturers should start looking at that. You have that C style again that matches the front of the LED taillights, your logos across the back. You can open the rear hatch or the glass and I think those are important. We'll talk about that when we get to value at the end because the storage will impress you. Further down you've got real dual exhaust. 
I think that's great because if you've got a vehicle this size, you want to be able to hear it. Also, in addition, you've got your towing, which we talked about as part of design, but they've got it tucked up underneath. And I think they've done a nice job about packaging all this. And that's part of what you want in a vehicle this size. You don't want everything so obvious because then it looks like a truck. So for design, it earned a nine. When you're looking at the quality of something of this size, you really have to look at all the details, not just the exterior panels and the fit and finish, which are great. You're adding in not just that, but the interior design, where you live in this vehicle, the quality of the materials, the real stitching, what they've done for your money, because all that adds into the value. Quality means something that's gonna last for a long time and a warranty to back it up. So for quality, it earned a nine. There are two ways to open the trunk. One is just the glass in case you have your hands full, and the other one is to open the rear hatch. There's 25.5 cubic feet of storage, which is great. That is 10 more cubic feet than the previous generation. When you press this button, there's one half of the third row, there's the other. It moves really fast. That increases your storage to 72 cubic feet. But wait, there's more. When you fold the second row down, it is completely flat and almost 123 cubic feet of storage, which is huge. That is about 28 more cubic feet than last year. But if you buy the XL, you'll get even more space because it's about 20 inches more space in length. That means you're hauling a lot of gear or you're hauling a lot of people. But either way, this vehicle will move just about anything part of that value play. And when you're looking at value based at the price point of what this vehicle offers, and there is a lot to offer at this price point. The Yukon itself comes in at $71,000. You add in that Denali package and you're in the 82 range. That is a lot of money overall, but in this segment, it is a huge value and it earned a value score of nine. When you look at all 10 categories that we talked about, there's a lot of positives here and they've done a great job redesigning this GMC Yukon and especially the Denali trim level. Now, yes, this is a premium trim level with a vehicle starting at 71,000, add that Denali package and our test vehicle came in at 83,000. Now, when you're comparing it to the Lincoln and the Cadillac and the other vehicles that are out there, there's not a lot of vehicles to choose from, but if you're looking for something that has towing capacity, people hauling and something you can use every day on and off road, there's a lot of value in this Yukon Denali. Therefore, we gave it a total score of 84. Make sure to check out the competitors on our channel. There's a link down below to our website where you'll get even more information. The website has been updated. We even have some Latino journalists now on our team, and we're really proud to have them because they bring even more to the party. We want to help you get car smarts because knowledge is power. If you got value from this video, make sure to give it a like and a share. We appreciate your support on our Patreon page. Page, make sure to follow me on all forms of social media at Lauren Fix. And we look forward to hearing your comments. If you bought one, you didn't buy one. Maybe I didn't answer your question. Put that down below. I'll get an answer for you as soon as possible so we can start the conversation. I love to hear your comments and we'll look forward to seeing you next time.